Over the past 24 months, it seems like snowmobiling has exploded. There's new riders in the sport, and there's a lot of people getting reinvigorated into the sport as well. But with all of these new sleds and all of these massive sled sales happening, the need to transport your snowmobile is still there. And here at Snow Tracks, I recently spec'd out a new aluminum enclosed hauler to move all of our sleds around during the winter months. But one thing that always bothers me, and I'm sure it drives you nuts too, is the damage the carbides and studs will do to all that fresh new flooring inside your trailer. Whether it's vinyl or wood, carbide is gonna take its toll unless you take some preventative steps. Or maybe your trailer is already very well used, but you wanna save yourself from wearing right through the plywood inside the trailer. Well, the folks from Caliber have all of these things covered. Caliber trailer products aren't just to save your flooring. They add huge safety to the ramps of your trailer and just walking inside the trailer in general, especially after your warm sled tunnel thaws out and the next morning the trailer floor is covered in ice. Caliber products make loading and unloading your sled way simpler with the sleds going where you point them and the old school ramp door burnouts being a thing of the past. You can spec out and configure all the stuff that you're going to need on Caliber's website for your trailer. Now today I have seven different products that I'm putting together to completely outfit the all new Snow Tracks trailer. Now the first thing I like to start on is the ramp doors because from there I'll be able to identify the ski and track paths for the interior portion when the time comes. Putting down the edge guard first gives me my outer ski tracking path and this product will keep the skis of the sled from running off the door edge or contacting the trailer door cable. These are especially handy on the smaller angled ramp doors. From here I use the tracks grabber mat. This product interlocks so it kind of clicks together and it gives your track all the traction you need on that angled ramp door. Cool part about it is all the nubs that are built into this four traction are designed to work with 2.5, 286, and three inch pitch tracks. The final part to the ramp door is using the low pro glides that are the basis for the inside ski to glide on. And I have opted for the 11 and a half inch wide version to give me the most ability to maneuver the sled where I want it in the trailer. They're also available in six and nine inch wide versions as well. Now when I get to this point, I like to move to the front of the trailer where the important install is the Flex Glides, an angleable, tall profile steering guide for your sled skis with a beefy outer shoulder that won't allow your skis to walk over, and it saves the inner wall of your trailer from the abuse of skis. Now moving to the interior of the trailer, I really only use two products. I use the Low Pro Glides that I used on the ramp door, and then I also use this Trax Mat, which is a 72 inch long traction mat. The Trax Mat is an 18 inch wide rollout mat easy to place and cut around recessed tie-off points and it installs with included stainless mounting hardware. I run one strip for each side of the trailer where I'll be staggering the sleds being put into the trailer. And as a little pro tip, it's always a good idea to have a measuring tape handy with the width of your sled skis, as well as a sharpie to measure out the path your sled will take to keep everything square and tidy looking. For Vino's trailers, you gotta get a little bit creative up at the front of the trailer to make sure that everything kind of lines up and goes in the angle you want it to. But once you get the layout figured out, you take a couple measurements, use a couple Sharpie marker lines, everything comes together really nicely. Now, should your trailer not have a flip over ramp extender, the Edge Glides product will help to bridge the space and keep your carbides from carving up the leading edge of your trailer door. Once you're all finished, making sure you have a quality tie down is another handy thing to look into. The Retrax ratchets from Caliber are a cool six foot ratchet strap that self retract the strap when you're not using it. I find these incredibly handy as when I'm done tying down my sled, I retract the strap and nothing gets frozen to the floor of the trailer. 
only to be a nightmare to use at the end of the day. While retail value and protecting your investment are very important, the primary goal here is keeping you safe and making your loading job much simpler, because that's going to give you way more time out on the snow. Trailers and snowmobiling, they go hand in hand. And when it comes to your trailer, there's always a little bit of an upgrade or probably some maintenance that should be done. And when you're doing that trailer maintenance or that upgrade, finding one place you can go to to get everything, that just saves you time and money. A quick online scouring of Princess Auto's website got me a good parts list and a confirmation that my gear was in stock at the store that I wanted to pick it up from. For today, I've got two different trailers to do a little bit of maintenance and a little bit of upgrading to. First up is the upgrades, but stay tuned as a little later in this segment, I'll be getting my hands dirty on a project anyone with a trailer needs to check out. For our brand new all aluminum trailer, I wanted to add in some cool but functional accessories and the first thing that I thought of was a power tongue jack. This PowerFist 3500 pound electric jack is really a cool add-on that doesn't take much to install and uses a very handy seven pin connector to power the jack. Although most will probably want to hardwire to their trailer's existing 12 volt system, which can be done very easily. The whole system installs in minutes without the need to alter anything on the trailer. And having this lifting power is a nice feature when the weather gets really cold and you got your trailer fully loaded with sleds and gear. Next, I'm gonna move inside the trailer to address some upgrades in the tie down department. Now this next product is really cool because you can custom tailor it to your trailer. E-Track is hugely popular and Princess Auto sells the track in all kinds of attachment accessories. I ordered eight foot as well as two foot E-Track sections to line both walls. I also ordered the E-Track wood screw attachment kit to make the job super simple. Install is about as easy as it comes and the reason I really like the E-Track is because it sits so near to flush on the wall and it doesn't have jagged edges or moving parts to fail. It's simple and easy to use. Now as for the attachments, this is where things get really cool. There are a whole host of great E-Track attachments, the most obvious being the two inch by eight tie-off straps. These allow you to custom locate your tie-off points and have some freedom of movement with the eight inch nylon strapping. There's a wide variety of lengths and basic tie-off E-Track adapters available. While the tie-offs are pretty obvious, it's all of the other great E-Track accessories that you can get for inside the trailer that really sell me on this product. Things like the E-Track hose holder will let you bail up anything from rope to garden hose. The E-Track wood beam socket works like the recesses in your truck bed for installing wood dividers and are great for moving time to segregate the inside of your trailer. And the many different shaped J-hooks in multiple sizes are just a nice little add-on to be able to place your ratchet straps or even your E-Track tie-off straps onto when they're not in use so that they don't get frozen into the floor of the trailer. Now earlier I did mention maintenance, and while most people will argue that there's two things guaranteed in life, death and taxes, I'd argue there's a third. Princess Auto has everything you could possibly want to maintain or replace broken parts on your trailer. Everything from new trailer couplers to safety chain replacements and even those cool LED fender clearance lights that always get broken off. They also have a wide variety of ProPoint batteries with 12 to 24 month warranties from automotive to power sports, lawn and garden, and even applications that'll work to replace your trailer battery that runs your interior lights when you're unplugged. But the biggest area that you need to keep an eye on for maintenance is definitely your electric brakes. While you can buy just the brake shoes or the magnets for replacement, we find that the best way to go about this is just buying the entire backer plate assembly all in one go. Now, keeping in mind that you do have to buy a left and right version, this whole process is pretty straightforward and you can do this at home. Removal of a brake drum reveals the backer assembly and reinstallation is very simple. Now, here's a bit of a tip for you. Electric brake wiring allows you to rewire either wire to any side of the backer. So you don't need to worry if you mix up the wires. While sometimes you can just replace the brake shoes, it does take a lot more work and you need to ensure you clean and properly lubricate the moving parts, which I find to have almost always been corroded beyond repair. Now upon reassembly, say you wanna do your brake drum and your wheel bearings at the same time. That's a package you can buy from Princess Auto and it's gonna give you years more worry-free service. This electric brake drum kit from Rockwell American comes with the entire drum, wheel bearings, shaft seal, and cap. Once you've removed the old drum and bearings, fitting on the new ones is a straightforward process after giving all the surfaces the bearings fit onto a good cleaning. Utilizing assembly lube is a great idea here, and once finished up and rebuilt, don't forget you need to repack the bearings with grease. If you take the time to do a full rebuild like this, you've essentially given your trailer's most important parts a complete refresh and can be assured of years more worry-free service. 
While we're all super anxious to pack up our trailer with sleds, get on the road and go ride, the reality is a little bit of time spent upgrading, but most importantly, maintaining your trailer means that you're gonna get out on the trails and not be stuck on the side of the road. I hope we all wanna be as safe as possible when we ride. Whether we're just looking out for ourselves or we have a whole family of riders to consider, safety should always be priority number one. One of the easiest ways to be safer is to make yourself more visible. Being seen has always been the most basic and effective way to avoid issues, not just while snowmobiling, but while participating in any recreational activity. But how can you increase your visibility without putting a whole bunch of awful looking lights all over your snowmobile? Well, CKX has the answer with their new 2022 Ungava lighted jacket. Now I had to look up what Ungava meant. Turns out it's a far Northern peninsula in the province of Quebec, Canada. Since I haven't had any actual hands-on experience with this jacket, I also had to look up someone who has and who could tell us more about it. Luckily for me, one of my best friends is a CKX brand ambassador and has firsthand experience with the Ungava lighted jacket. You were actually part of uh, a video shoot with CKX for this specific jacket. Tell me a little bit about the Ungava jacket. Forget about the light. Just tell me about the jacket itself. Is it actually a good snowmobile jacket? Yeah, so it's it's, it's really comfortable to wear. Um, it's a fully insulated jacket. Uh, so it is really warm. On the days that we were shooting, it was pretty cold outside, but fully wind resistant. I wasn't cold at all. Um, I, I really like the, the design of it. It's simple yet still stylish. Uh, the graphics on it um, with, with the cool CKX logo pr predominantly on, on the jacket. Um, and it comes in three different colors. There's the orange, the gray, and the uh, high-vis green. Um, so you do get some options there. Did you get a chance to test the lighting feature and how did it work? Yeah, so when we were out riding, like I said, we were riding during the day. We also did some shooting at night with it. And I found that it worked really well in, in all three. Um, obviously at night is when you see it sure. the most, uh, but even during the day, like if you're out going down the lake and there's you know lots of snow dust and you know there's a few guys up ahead of you, you can't see the tail light on the snowmobile, but you can see the, the red jacket, uh, the red light on the jacket, no problem. So you know exactly where, where your buddies are up ahead. And um, so yeah, the light feature works really well in, in that respect. Could you feel the light strip or the wires of the battery pack while you're wearing the jacket at all? No, no, you obviously the light strip, you, yeah, you don't know, you can't, doesn't feel any different on your back. Um, the only thing is, is the battery pack does go inside the inside pocket of, of your jacket. Um, so you might feel it a little bit like something's in your pocket, but it would be the same as like having a cell phone or a wallet. What are your thoughts on auxiliary lighting other than just a tail light? If you do a lot of night riding, I would highly recommend that jacket for sure. Just because the more visibility I think is, is better, mm -hmm. um, especially at night because visibility is reduced. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that jacket does offer that just from a pure safety standpoint. Um, I think CKX did a really good job at, at uh, you know, coming out with that unique feature because there's really not a whole lot of other options as far as a light integrated into a snowmobile jacket. Thanks for coming out and answering our questions yeah, for us. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. I think the Ungava lighted jacket with its high mounted LED light strip is a fantastic idea and I think it will make you the rider safer. But what if you have different gear or you want to go one step further? Well, it's Bite Harder who has the solution for that. Their helmet safety light is a simple product that takes visibility to another level for a couple important reasons. First, it's mounted at the highest point, your head. Typically your head deals with the least amount of snow dust, so a light mounted there will be the most visible, but your head is also constantly moving. So when it's lighted, it'll attract a ton of attention. The second reason the Bite Harder helmet safety light takes visibility to another level is that the light itself is offered in multiple colors red, amber, green, blue, and pink. This makes it possible to color code your lights on a group ride or use different colors to identify different riders in a group, which is especially effective for families. Let's say dad typically leads the group. Give him the green light. That way everybody in the group will always know where the leader is. Let's say mom's typically the sweep. Give her the red light. This'll grab the attention of riders approaching from the rear. 
give brother the blue light and sister the pink one. Now mom and dad always know where their kids are, even at night, and especially when the snow dust is bad. The Bite Harder Helmet Safety Light installs onto any helmet with simple double-sided tape. It's powered by your sled's 12-volt accessory outlet, and it includes a junction box that allows you to power both the light and your heated shield with one cord. In my opinion, the ultimate setup would be the CKX Ungava Jacket and the Bite Harder Helmet Safety Light. This would offer the ultimate invisibility at multiple height levels. If you list safety at the very top of your priority list when you ride, being visible should be a high priority consideration and these two products make being more visible both simple and stylish. I don't know about you, but I never conceived that I would be standing here talking to you about an Articat Thundercat with power steering and electronic suspension. I mean, what a time to be alive. This absolute beast of a sled right here is the 2022 Articat ZR Thundercat EPS with ATAC. It's the most primo, high-end, showroom blazing, box ticking culmination of bottom right hand digits that you can possibly spec out at your Arctic dealership. This is top shelf, top tier, and should you have gotten your name in on one, also top horsepower and top speed. Nothing has this cat beat. The legacy of Articat horsepower domination, well, it seems to still stand. So you went to your Articat dealer in the spring, you gave me your credit card and you said, give me your best. And this is what shows up. The Thundercat has a reputation to uphold and let me get a few things straight. It's holding it with clenched teeth. The 998cc turbo triple is still heart pounding. Feels like you just lit the fuse on one of Elon's rockets and they forgot to put you inside the capsule. I mean, the power produced, whether it's an actual 200 horsepower, I don't care. It's big, it's strong, and it feels more powerful than anything else out there. This is what the Thundercat has always been, and I get a strong feeling that Arctic isn't gonna let that go. Although while I do feel the T-Cat is a savage beast under the hood, there are many refinements, on this model specifically, that make it very trailable. The T-Cat comes in three flavors. Base, which is still very premium, but for lack of better words, that's what we're gonna call it. For about a grand more, you step up to the EPS version, and then for another thousand bucks on top of that, you get this with the ATAC suspension, as well as EPS. And you're gonna be happy with any of the T-Cats that you buy, but I'm here to bring you up to speed on the EPS and ATAC version. Two technologies that we have a good amount of experience with and are able to give you the lowdown on. Many folks will ask if they need these two technologies, and the truth is that no, you don't need them but yes, they are very impressive. I could ask if you need 200 horsepower or 13.5 inches of suspension travel as well, but again, these are not needs. They're wants, and they deliver what is the best riding, best handling four-stroke snowmobile Articat has ever produced. The standout feature for me on this slide is the ATAC on-the-fly adjustable suspension. It gives the rider complete control over the one thing that we correlate with having a good day's ride. Suspension and its ability to smooth out the trail's shortcomings truly is the biggest area of compliance that we look for as sledders. I mean, I could be riding a ZR200, and if it's buttery smooth, I'll still be able to say I had a great day's ride at minimum horsepower. ATAC gives you three preset suspension modes of soft, medium, and firm, and you can change between them at your leisure while riding or at a standstill. The Fox Zero IQS shocks then electronically go to work and change your compression settings. Now, interestingly, the Arctic ATAC system uses only the rear arm and front ski shocks. The front arm shock is not electronic. However, we do wonder if this isn't something that will come in the future. Now, I know that the big question is gonna be how does ATAC work as compared to smart shocks? But the truth is, these two systems are completely different. Smart shocks is a constantly adapting system reading multiple sensors and altering to your current conditions. ATAC is a preset selectable suspension system. So really the two can't be compared. What I can tell you is that on the big mile days, the ATAC is a joy to have available. If I'm being honest, when the trail gets rough on a standard sled, I don't get off and adjust my clickers for the trail. I, as I assume you do also, just suffer through it in hopes that the groomer magically has been through it our next turnoff. Most times that's not the case and we just keep riding. As we know to readjust the suspension will take time and we just want to get to smoother trails. ATAC brings the smoother trails to your fingertip and switching compression on the fly results in significantly better compliance in a millisecond. If QS3 is the evolution and simplification of a wide range clicker system, 
ATAC is the evolution of QS3. Now, I haven't said much about the EPS steering on this cat. While I am a fan of the stock ZR steering feel without EPS, I will say that the EPS system is going to add big benefits for high mile riders. If you're going to have power steering on a sled, having it on a four stroke just makes sense. The added weight of the engine increases ski pressure and therefore opens up the benefits of power steering. Yes, the EPS system does add in a fair bit of weight, but again, you're talking about a 200 horsepower class sled with all of the bells and whistles. What's another 20 pounds? The EPS has been well tuned to fit the characteristics of the ZRT Cat chassis, and it doesn't cause the steering to feel vague or numb. And for those high mile touring riders, this is something that will undoubtedly keep you feeling as loose and limber on day five as you were on day one. The rest of the T-Cat looks to be much like it has been in the past. LED headlight, included goggle bag on the dash, and as always, cool Arctic Cat styling. And the includes on this flagship model are long, with the adjustable front ski stance to the Ripsaw 2 1.25 inch track and the 11 inch included mid-height windshield and heated seat, there's lots to like about the extras. But one area that should be made mention of that's less in the visual spotlight is the clutches, and there are big changes here. No longer do we have the Team Industries rapid response setup, but now the Arctic Cat Adapt CBT package that uses a narrower clutch that's also lightened. This new Arctic Cat design is said to increase belt life and also improve the engine's throttle response and the performance of the turbo motor. Time will tell on the belt life department, but what we can say is that the T-Cat feels fast and as smooth as ever.